Mark from Vortec Pro, video number 11. Today we're going to get into the cylinder heads and the modifications we're going to make. We're going to show you how we prep the heads and uh, we're going to flow test these head stock. Then we're going to CC the combustion chambers and intake, intake and exhaust runners so we can get a good baseline of what this head started out as. This is the actual head that we're going to use in our build. And I want to go back over our build here again because sometimes we kind of get away from what we're doing here in these videos. But what our plan is to build a 467 inch big block Chevy using production rods, production crank, production block, production heads. We're going to use a mall piston in it and we're going to have, we're going to end up right around 10 and a half to 1 compression. And we're going to use a 264 at 50 solid lifter flat tappet cam. It's a single pattern cam. Uh, it's 264 at 50, and it's going to be about 566 lift net at the valve. And we're looking for 620 plus horsepower out of this motor. And we're looking to be able to turn it 7,000 RPMs. After we get done, Dyno testing this engine, we're going to put it in my Chevelle and we're going to take it to the drag strip and we're going to run it. And we're going to run it at a known weight. So let's get into this head. This is the head we're going to use. The, the match to this head is on the flow bench right there. Can you get over there and see that, Tommy? So we've taken this head, we've uh, Magnafluxed it, cleaned it, magnafluxed it. We've tapped all the holes on the head everywhere. There's some exhaust flange repairs that need to be made, which we'll get into later and show you how we do that. We've scribed the cylinders. Can you can you get in there? We've scribed the combustion chamber so we know how far we can unshroud the chamber. Okay, hold on. I want to show these, show the people again what you're looking for. Yeah, okay, that help if I get the gasket on right. There we go. <laughs> okay, I think I've got it lined up pretty good with the bolt holes. You see how even this gasket is around these ports? that's what you want when you start with the head core is you want the ports to line up with these with the intake gasket another thing you can we we'll always look at this distance from the valve seat to the top of the short turn this distance from here to the top of the short turn we want it to be the same on the other end of the head roughly if it's a lot thicker on this end and it's thinner on this end, we don't want to use the head. This is a good casting to start with. Uh, I think this will turn out good. Now, another thing that we will do with this head when we put the valve guides in it, you can see if I'm pan in on this valve guide. You notice how this guide, this intake guide, is not concentric. The outside diameter of the valve guide is not concentric with the inside diameter of the valve guide. It's oblonged. We will knock all these intake guides out of this head and put new ones in that are concentric. The factory gang drilled the valve guides after these were installed in the heads. They put these knock in guides in, then they gang drilled the valve guides after they were installed in the heads, which made them not concentric. We want the valve guide concentric with the valve seat, obviously, but it's also going to help. It's also going to help. Can you got, got my hand? It's going to also help tilt the valve this direction towards the short turn of the intake port. 
usually that helps the flow. And obviously that's what we're after. Okay, so we're gonna talk about what we're gonna do, do with the valve guides here. We're gonna keep the factory knock-in guides in the exhaust. We're not gonna knock those out. There's really no point, they're in good shape as far as the metal looks. We're gonna put a K-line inside of them. We're gonna take all the intake guides, we're gonna press them out. We're gonna put new guides in. Here's the parts that we're gonna use on our valve guides. These are gonna go in and replace the intake valve guides. These are gonna go inside the factory valve guides on the exhaust, and these will go inside these. And how we do that is we drill, we drill the guide out with this core drill. We install the guide with this tool. We would broach it to size with this tool. And then finally we will hone it to the final size with the hone. As you can see, this is a hone right here. It is very, very, very important that this guide is drilled completely straight. If this, this is probably the most important part of doing the valve job on these heads is getting the guide straight and round. It's very important on how this guide is drilled and we'll get into that later when we actually show you how we install the guides. There's a lot of talk on the internet always about how the guide should be done. We'll show you how we do it. Uh, this K-line guide, I've never had one fail ever in building these motors. Uh, I mean, it takes a little bit of work to get it installed right, but once it's installed and honed, it works extremely well. So again, we're going to replace all the intake guide knock-ins, the factory knock-ins. We're going to leave the factory knock-ins on the exhaust in place. We're going to core drill these guides and the exhaust guides with this drill. We're going to press these or drive these in with an air hammer. We're going to run this through the guide to set the size and broach it and lock it in place. And then we will final hone it. So what we're going to do once we have the valve guides installed, we're going to cut the valve guides down to install a 530 seal over the guide. We'll machine it. We're going to machine the intake spring pockets down 70 thousandths because we're working with a 77 casting which has a high spring pocket in it which we talked about in our head video before. Once we do that, get these all done, we'll hone the guides like I just said. We'll, we'll hone them to final size then we'll come in and do the valve job. When we do the valve job, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here with a chamber cutter and we're going to unshroud this area of the exhaust valve right here. Then we're going to unshroud this area of the intake valve. And there's a few reasons we do this. One is because we want more room around this valve for flow, but we also want a freshly machined area around this valve seat so when we cut the valve seat, it's cutting into fresh material that's exactly the same all the way around. That'll help us get a concentric valve seat to the valve guide. We're going to enlarge the exhaust from 1720 to 1, 8, 1 inch 880. We're going to take the intakes and take them from 2.0650 to 2190. We're going to use a stainless steel Ferrera 3.8 stem valve. And we'll get into all the valve job in the, in the guide work. We're going to show you everything. But first, we want to flow test these heads and check the port volume and the chamber volume to see what we're starting with.